And we are live. Hello, everybody. This is the Event Success Insights Podcast with me, Chris Escodra, the world's first event success manager. And in this podcast series, we are discussing the latest trends with influential thought leaders, professionals, and academics in the event industry from Finland and from around the world. This podcast is powered by Luti, the leading event success platform that enables you to create meaningful encounters and also measure them with the unique experience value score. What is the experience value score? It's a North Star metric. Find out more at eventsuccessmanagement.com and luti.com. This is a live show being streamed live to uh, a variety of platforms. of my screen so make sure to leave your comments below our live stream from wherever you're tuning in and listening and watching to this podcast now today with me in the studio brought to you live from the heart of helsinki the finnish capital is monica birkle and here is my guest hello monica hello krissa Uh, and uh, today's topic, uh, it's uh, educating future events, event professionals, uh, as Monica is my former colleague, a senior lecturer in event management at Hagahelia University of Applied Sciences. Uh, so thank you, Monica, for, for being here uh, today. So first of all, I'd like to, uh, to take the time and uh, introduce you to, to our listeners and guests. Yes. So could you please give us first some insights about uh, your background, your career, and what brought you to uh, education and event management education uh, specifically? First of all, Krista, thank you for inviting me and thank you, Liuti, for this opportunity to talk about, I think, one of the best study programs that are offered for young people, <clears throat> event management studies. And um, how I ended up teaching event management dates back to my activities in the tourism business, uh, in sales, marketing, product development, service development in various destinations in uh, southern Finland. And um, my first contact with the bigger events were when I was uh, working for Fiskars. And um, in the Fiskars village, we did art exhibition openings and season openings, and we went to a lot of fairs and exhibitions. And um, um, back in the days, it's a long time ago, uh, the Fiskars company turned 350 mm -hmm. years, and that a whole year was packed with various events. And that really got me interested in the event industry and... Um, Then when I moved to teaching, I thought that this is something that we need to include mm -hmm. and strengthen in our tourism and hospitality programs because I really believe that event and tourism and hospitality, they are so closely mm -hmm. linked mm -hmm. that um, it's a good thing actually to have them all in one degree program so mm -hmm. that they have this kind of really broad understanding of the, of the whole industry and how they are interlinked. Mm -hmm. So now I've been teaching event uh, management um, since 2007 mm -hmm. and um, during this period of time we have uh, managed to develop a strong program for our uh, students and for the future event professionals and um, we are continuing the work. We are right at the moment in a curriculum renewal process. And as a result of that, we will be able to enlarge the offering for our event students, which is uh, great news. I've been waiting for that. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, since now we have been operating within the Restonomy, so the Bachelor of Tourism or Hospitality, hospitality Management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but now we can then have a really good and solid um, specialization. Yes, so I'm happy. 
So tell a little bit uh, about Hakahele University of Applied Sciences. This is actually one of my my former employers, and I had the pleasure to to meet Monica already in 2010 when I started working uh, as well there as a, as a marketing uh, full time lecturer, and I was teaching event management as well in the English uh, degree program. So um, great working place, one of the most well known uh, universities of applied sciences here in Finland with many partners globally. So tell a little bit about the uh, the Hakahele offering in general, and also, uh, again, about the event management specialization being offered in, in Porvo campus that you're mainly teaching, but um, elsewhere as well. Yes. <clears throat> so, as I already mentioned, in Finland, we don't have a full degree program like in UK or Germany or the Netherlands, but it's included in the tourism programs. And um, the students, they do obtain, like, from the very start, it was important for us to develop our training programs together with the industry. Mm. So we have been working hard, establishing the networks, uh, being a member of Meeting Professionals International and Congress Network Finland and also international associations like ATLAS, the business uh, tourism sector there that used to be run by Rob Davidson. And now uh, I'm... Um, coordinating that that group so this is the base I would say and this is the strength and this is the added value that we can bring to our students at, at Haga Helia. Is it only on Porvo campus the event management uh, or is it in other campuses as well so how many uh, would you say how many students uh, from Haga Helia only at least in your knowledge would be uh, graduating having studied event management? So that varies a little bit from year to year and uh, by no means, the Porvo campus is not the only campus that is offering this kind of uh, training, but we have kind of mm, made it like as a full specialization. Mm. Uh, but of course, in the business programs in our Pasila campus, there are event management courses and obviously also in Vierumäki, our sports campus. Right. So they do a lot of sports related, related events as well. Mm. But um, when it comes to Porvo campus and our kind of profile, so this is, uh, this is the home base for, for the event management studies. And when it comes to the graduate numbers, well, this is a really rough estimate, mm. but I would say yearly it could vary between 25 and 40 mm. students mm. Uh, who have this solid, solid um foundation in, in event studies. Right. Yeah. And um, I like what you said about the, um, the, the event management education and the connection with the industry and also with, with hospitality and destination branding. And, and so all this have to be seen holistically, what, what cities are doing in order to, to brand themselves and create a positive brand image and what events can offer to cities and destinations, but also what's the cooperation with the industry and all the companies is organizing events in, in a certain uh, location or host community. So let's before we go into into this, I would like to uh, to 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 talk about what the the past of the event education has been and come to today what is the unique value that is being added because I know very well I work five years on Porto campus and I know that the emphasis uh, as well in the differentiation uh is in the event management studies. A lot of events are being organized, a lot of uh, semester or academic year projects are being held around events commissioned by the industry, by companies. So what would be, Monica, the difference, the biggest difference you see on how event management has been taught before and what event management is now and what do you see the trend go when it comes to, to education mm. of uh, event management from the theoretical and also the practical point of yeah. view? I would say the event management studies, the field is quite new <clears throat> in Finland and it's still evolving a lot. Um, when I compare the event studies in Finland <clears throat> to what our colleagues are doing in um, in. European countries, I would say that we have a stronger focus on practice and um, and also the kind of the industry connection is, is 
there from the very start. Uh, so that that is, I would say, the one value adding factor for our students that they do from the very start. They do volunteering. They work as event assistants. They go to coordinating events. Mm. They do their internships and their theses, and they work with commissioned real life event productions already during their studies. So that means that they have this confidence mm. when they then move on to with their careers that they are brave enough to apply for for jobs in the industry and mm. they know what it means and it they know what it takes. Mm. I also have students who after they have completed their event management studies they come to the conclusion that okay this is not for me it's mm. far too stressful hectic. and hectic and and but they they usually say that okay so this is what it means this is how it takes let's leave it to the professionals mm -hmm. and i will be the one who buys these services so i think that's also a really good learning point that mm. they realize that hey do I have what it takes to work in the event industry as a producer? And we will come to this. Now I have to, uh, we have um, uh, Dr. Rice from the UK tuning in. So hi, Gareth. Um, Gareth has been a professor here in the University of Helsinki as well. And he's asking the question, uh, what percentage of graduates secure well-paid jobs in the field of event management? I think it ties very well to what you were just saying, uh, working for real projects, commissioned by the industry, doing their thesis and work placements there. Do you have, Monica, any insights? And then a follow-up to Gareth's uh, um, question. Industry connections are very important indeed. Thumbs up. And let's take first uh, Dr. Rice's question regarding the uh, graduates and the percentage that secure a well-paid job in the field in Finland or abroad, if you have your insights over the years of, of educating those young yeah. professionals. Yeah, thank you for that question. I uh, don't have exact numbers because we don't, we, we don't have the means of actually monitoring our alumni, you know, career paths so this is really based on on my connections and the alumni that I still have contact with and I do know where they are placed and at the moment of course there's a huge uh, demand for event managers because during the pandemic there was a lot of turbulence on the job market so there's a lot of open positions and I'm really really happy to see mm. that our our graduates they find their ways and also i saw yes. Eli, elena here. here here we have uh the proof of that elena yes. uh martiskainen uh says the event management specialization when the was the main reason for me to apply to hagahelia porvo campus and uh she goes on to say that regards from my internship at an event a management agency. Yes. That's yeah. great, Elena. And I was just about to ask uh, you, Monica, that you must, because I've been an event management teacher as well with you, and I know very well, even though the statistics perhaps are not there uh, or the insights, we know when we're visiting venues, when we are networking, when we're visiting events and conferences, and, and we see our graduates, we Absolutely. see our alumni everywhere. Yes. So that's uh, great to, to see and, and see them succeed and being in good positions in the industry. At least those who, as you said, they finally realize after graduation that, yes, this is indeed yes. for me. I did. Then they go on mm. to pursue yeah. what yeah. They, they studied. Them. And hi, Elena, it's nice to see you online and these are really the success stories um i could share it here this is a superb very recent example elena was running a big production um a game development world championship event a full hybrid event with two days of pre-streams and mm -hmm. the gala dinner which was yeah. hybrid and um, she was running that very successfully and now she started her internship she will probably also continue with her thesis and when she is then finally graduating, she has probably many options to mm. choose from where she wants to pursue mm. her career. Mm. 
great. And this is the the added value here that the graduates have already a, a CV that has a lot of experience exactly. over the years. Though, so they're not just studying the theories, but that they're collecting real life experiences. And then they're sought after in the market. And as you said, le- you were just talking um, before about the skills. So let's talk about the skills needed uh, nowadays, and especially after the the two years of the pandemic that accelerated certain developments in the industry, but hindered other developments or other other ways of doing things uh, prior. So what would you say are the the skills that an event uh, manager, or producer, or how you want to call them, event architect, uh, Osnad Mangs would say. Mm. So what would be the skills? Give us well, top five skills on top of your mind. How many time? <laughs> how, how much time do we have? It's Take obviously a long list, mm. you know. And I think every event professional, every event planner needs to also find his or her own passion and her own skill set that they build upon. You know, somebody loves Excel and another person hates Excel. So if you really ha- love Excel, build on that. And if you are um, a good networker, socially skilled, you really enjoy and love uh, being around people. So just then maybe head for, you know, account manager. Uh, people skills are always in demand. So that's my maybe first advice to really find out what you want and what are your strengths and learn about yourself. I think it's also tied to coping in the industry that you actually know who you are and what you want and what are your your kind of skill set. But they they are general general skills needed in in working life. I would say team working skills is really important because Nobody does events alone. Time management, project management, organizational skills, understanding about budgeting, of course, um, leadership, event staff, you know, monitoring of volunteers and managing those. Um, and then a good sense of humor mm-hmm. you would need. And, uh, and, and then in the end, I think since it's a quite stressful and project-based industry, uh, you know, finding those good ways of recharging. Mm -hmm. Those are good Mm -hmm. skills because, you know, Mm. you have one, you complete one event, you might not even, you know, the next one is, you know, waiting and knocking on the door and Mm. there's a lot of things Mm. going on. So when you have those moments in between, then finding ways to kind of recharge your batteries and and move on to the next uh, production. Very good. Uh, we still have a great comments coming. Thank you very much. And keep your comments coming. We have a lot of commenters from uh, LinkedIn. And of course, everybody tuning in from YouTube Live or, or Facebook. Uh, make sure you leave your comments as well. Everything is gathered up here uh, in front of uh, our screens. Uh, just, Monica, if I can redirect you, you can take your note perhaps that way so that you're better uh, focused there on the on the camera uh, so that we can see you better. So, um Dr. Rice is asking, what are the most challenging types or uh, type of events to manage? And does Haga Helia prepare the graduates for mm. them? Uh, so well, challenging types of events or, well, or I challenges? Would say, yeah, or, I would say now with the new technologies, um, as everybody who agrees, I would say they are the hybrid events, like really good hybrid events. Um, we needed to include this in our studies very quickly. Um, The first spring of the pandemic, we established a studio in uh, one of our campuses, and then we learned on the go, you know. There was just so many things that you needed to understand. There was uh, devices and technology that you needed to invest in. And um, there was nobody there to teach you. It was just trial and error and learning from uh, event professionals, attending a lot of virtual and hybrid events, seeing how other people do, interviewing, reading blogs and listening to podcasts. So that was maybe the biggest leap that we did during the uh, pandemic. And, and still, even now with the 
with an experience of a few successful hybrid formats, I still do believe that it's one of the most challenging formats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you learn, Monica, as as an event um, manager, management teacher, uh, and professional uh, over the past two years? What would be one personal learning um, in your teaching, and what what you could do to help your students more? Did you see that in your uh, teaching or coaching approach, you you discover something else that that you need to offer to them to help them? Yeah, I think we are all living in this. Mm, moment now that after the pandemic we are a little bit maybe struggling with getting back our students Mm -hmm. to the campuses Mm -hmm. just as you know companies are struggling to get employees back to their offices Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe that learning and that insight is still somehow it needs to be processed and we all need to figure out what would be the reason to come to campus and what would be the reason to come to the office and what would be the reason to come to events. Mm. So what is actually the added value of uh, meeting in person? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the maybe biggest challenge also Mm. of of the event industry that we we have never faced this situation before that we have to convince and we have to argue Mm. why are live events so important? so this is maybe a, an insight for me personally that you could never take anything for granted. Right. You could never take for granted that people, you know, want to join, want to meet, want to come. But there needs to really be meaningful content and um, you know a well planned agenda uh, for for people to join physically. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this is also what event, uh, yesterday I was talking to the International Management Assistance Association. I had a hundred people uh, attending a webinar in the evening and um, I did present to them that that's, that's the key question, that why event? Why even Now we have to really uh, make sure before we start doing anything from the pre-planning phase that why we're organizing events how does it tie with our strategic objectives how does it tie with our learning in this case how does it tie with the the business uh, the educational uh, objectives and um, this is very important now I think people after the pandemic uh, and I want your insights to that I, I believe they will be very selective in which events they will be attending because yes they are hungry for events they're hungry to get out and and go back to norm and how things used to be but I think now they will be very mindful of their time and, and how well uh, or how, how time uh, their time is is well spent or not so what is your take on on that absolutely I fully agree and I have noticed now in the spring when you know things open up and there is such a hunger for events as you said but at the same time we are a little bit stuck now with the old habits that we developed during the pandemic Mm. so we've seen big no-shows unfortunately like it's all over the event industry in finland probably europe-wide it's a global problem people sign up like oh this event and that event and oh i will finally meet people and uh, let's go there and there and then all of a sudden you notice that hmm my schedule look like this. Mm. I need to travel. I need to prepare. I need to do this and that, all kinds of preparations. And then they maybe decide to opt for the hybrid or opt for a recording that mm. is distributed later on. So we are still looking like also event organizers. They are. They need to. They need to figure out what is the right format for our event. Like, do we have an exclusively live event? which maybe gives a little bit of a VIP experience Mm. that only, Mm. you know, exclusively Mm. for the selected ones are here. Mm -hmm. Or do we want to serve also Mm. remote audiences? Do we go hybrid or do we have fully virtual? So Mm. um, these are big decisions and it also ties, as you said, to the strategy. Like Mm. what kind of events do we want to produce and how, how are we kind of, what are we known for? Mm. Uh, Yeah. 
Uh, let me let us read a little bit uh, of your comments, and I'm so grateful that you keep them coming as we requested. Here we are going live in the Event Success Insights podcast with me, Monica Birtle. I'm Chris Skodra, and Rauna Graulus uh, says that the choice of event management is also the reason she applied to Hagahelia as well. So shout out to Rauna as well, and then. Um, Professor Dr. Rice is saying, one of the best managed events I attended many times in Finland was Flow Festival at Suvilahti. It has grown over the years to attract some of the biggest music acts on the planet. Event management is clearly a real strength in Finland. Uh, thank you, uh, Gareth, always uh, with your uh, being a great ambassador for Finland. And I'm sorry uh, that Finland lost you, unfortunately, and you had to leave. Uh, but you're always welcome to to come back to to Finland. Uh, Finland needs uh, such such international and inspiring and intelligent people that that promote uh, Finland the best way. So our greetings to to the UK, and um, we have also a comment from. Um, an anonymous LinkedIn user, it seems. Uh, hey, uh, how big a role does sustainable event management play in the education so far? So, Monica, question Thank for you: you. Yes. sustainability uh, and event management, and how important that is in in the way you are educating uh, the future professionals. It's, it's definitely in the core. So everything we do is kind of reflected through the sustainability glasses. Um, I can just name one example. We are working with Suomen Linna and a big public event coming up in November. Mm. It's called Viaporin Kekri. And um, there w- our students will create a sustainability program for this event specifically. And this is a l- one example of the learning cooperations that we do with various organizations and um, and companies. Instead of reading, I mean, there's so much information out there. There are books, and there, but I think our students, they also need to learn how to apply these. So they, they really need to, okay, first, of course, you know, get acquainted with the theory, familiarize what are the key concepts, what are the mechanisms, but then really also figuring out, okay, how do we apply this? Mm. How can we use it? What parts of the sustainability do we apply? Do we focus on the environmental side? Do we focus on the um, uh, the social impact or what? I mean, the scope of the sustainability is so huge, and I th- I believe that it's better maybe to focus on some smaller concepts mm. and really bring them to the in action uh, and practice the, yeah. mm. and then evaluate. And then next year when the Aparin Kekri is coming again, we can fo- focus on another team. And then soon Suomen Linna and the organizers, they will have kind of practice based evidence mm. of what really works yep. and how do we communicate about these to the right. audience and this is exactly what event success management is all about is about those incremental changes that each event uh, is better than the previous and you make incremental changes and in every event implementation you add a little stone and a little um, effort that has the, the eventually turns out that it has a continuous learning and continuous impact yeah. rather than trying to to do everything and then accomplish nothing yeah, that's true because i think sustainability could all, can also be a little bit overwhelming mm-hmm. like oh you have all these fields and you have all these criteria and you have so many metrics that you need to yeah. fulfill so it feels sometimes a bit exhausting but mm. if you kind of narrow it down what is relevant for this right. event and then you focus on a few areas mm. and do improvements there and then you can enlarge exactly this leads us very nicely to my next question that i've been planning to ask you and this is important here in the event success uh, insights podcast and in event success management how do you measure the success of your first of all um If we address the events organized by students uh, under your supervision, so what are the the targets you're setting? Uh, do they do they come from educational learning settings from the educational point of view, and do they come from the business commissioner? And then how do you measure 
at at the end how is the process how do you go about it do you have a, a retrospective meeting with the student a debriefing so tell us a little bit how you're educating these professionals in setting the right targets measuring them and um, I know Hagahele is also using Luti yeah. and I must say that Hagahele is doing excellent in uh, EVS scores mm -hmm. so yes. tell a little bit uh, about generally all metrics you're using and of course how do you incorporate the EVS as a North Star metric to yeah. guide you yeah. into what worked what didn't work so well in our events and what actions to I'm take I'm glad to we have a couple of students here mm -hmm. joining us they can um, probably agree that uh, I would I would call myself obsessive with objectives <laughs> really uh, when you start any event planning process setting the targets and the objectives mm -hmm is sometimes a bit overlooked, but I try to really stop my students there and think, okay, what do we want to achieve? Mm. And really setting those smart goals that they are specific enough and they are realistic and they are time bound and they are measurable. Uh, so these are, this is something that um, we focus on a lot. And at the same time, we define. So what are the metrics? Mm. So if we say that um, an easy metric is, of course, you know, number of attendees. So that's easy to measure. But what about um, um, more qualitative data? So or, or networking or learning or uh, change of behavior even. Sometimes we have those events mm -hmm. that mm. target, yeah. you know, some kind of behavioral change. Right. And so that's, that's great. It's very transformational. Exactly. And I think events have that magical they power have, to transform individuals and yes. behaviors and mindsets. So, so um, how do you go about those? Al then? Align with the objectives we, in the very initial phase, we think about, okay, how do we, how can we measure this? What are the suitable tools? Do you have a survey? Where comes the EVS score in place and how do we use that? Um do we need some interviews? Do we need some more in-depth focus groups? So mm -hmm. I think measuring is a skill that you can learn. And of course, in, in a university setting, uh, in uh, universities of applied sciences, we also offer different kind of methods mm -hmm. and research methods. So they can apply then various various methods to find out actually what was the real impact of, mm -hmm. of this event. But as you ask in the beginning so what are the key metrics i would say still we are an educational institution and the young uh, students they are here to learn so they of course we also set learning aims and mm. we reflect upon those in mm -hmm. various ways and um, they do also a lot of peer assessment because students work in teams in project production teams so it's important for them also to learn to give feedback to each other and you know supporting their teammates you know strengths and and developments so yeah there's it's a variation of of metrics and methods that we use mm -hmm. And uh, Monica, uh, regarding the um, you the the variety of events you have uh, with your students throughout Hagahelia in the degree programs you're teaching, and as well as other other Hagahelia campuses. Do you have um, a clear vision uh, and picture of your event portfolio? What uh, what events do we have or what events we're doing? And not in an ad hoc basis, meaning that we're doing events and we're putting them in a calendar afterwards. And that's our event portfolio. But do you have, if we go back to strategic, um, like, from the perspective of the Hagahelia Educational Institution strategic objectives, do you have from the top down some strategic objectives into what kind of events our students should be organizing mm -hmm. in this calendar year or academic year, in, in this case, in academic institutions, we have yeah. academic years and semesters. So we need to maybe differentiate between student-driven projects Productions mm. and Hagahelia own event right. 
exactly. events that we organize. Right. So let's split it up. So first, Hagahelia's own productions, yeah. and then the, yeah. the the students. So and sometimes those can be interlinked, right? You have they students they working Absolutely. for it. Absolutely. So yeah. that, that's yeah. great. So um, when it comes to Hagahelia events, I mean, there's a variety, starting from graduation ceremonies to trainings and seminars and conferences, scientific conferences that we are hosting. Uh, we go to trade shows and um, there's all kind of, you know, pop-ups and launches uh, in our premises also. We also rent our premises for event organizers. So there is a variety. And and when you ask, like, what is the, how well documented is this event portfolio? I would say not that well yet, but we're working on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have an appointed person now in our organization, which is handling the event manage- management processes. And the work has started, you know. Right. And actually f- here, when it comes to kind of documenting and understanding uh, about the event portfolio in a big organization. I mean, we have over 600 employees and we have five campuses and everybody's doing events in various organizations or departments. Mm-hmm. So how do we, you know, how do we get the big picture? And if, without an event software solution, like we would have no clue. But now we can go at least to, to Luti and we can we can check from the various Luti accounts in our organization and we can actually get some good data from there. How many, uh, at what time, how many attendees. So there's a good kind of base for exactly. for starting this process mm. but that's great to hear that you're starting there's a person this this process yes. is being developed because obviously uh yeah go but ahead. if you would ask our organization so what is your event portfolio how many attendees how many events i, I would i would guess it would be a difficult question to answer at the moment, but mm. maybe towards the end of the year, we are better prepared for a question like that. And of course, you are also an admin user of Luti and yes. an event management uh, lecture. So you have the the insights. Yes. So I think it's also important that, uh, that these insights are communicated to everybody within an organization. So everybody could see the big picture. Because, Absolutely. you know, um, nowadays, I think also with the pandemic, what has become became very apparent is that there is the tip of the iceberg. We have this very visible public uh, sales and marketing trade fairs uh, events. And then under the surface, as, as I think you touched upon that, there are a lot of meetings and there's a lot of encounters and a lot of other events that that there are they're under the surface of of the uh, of the water, and uh, those events also could be measured, could be improved. The participant experience could be improved, so yeah. it could be meetings you having with with your colleagues. So so um, uh, those also could be meaningful encounters that could have. It could be you know farewell coffees for a colleague that's retiring. So Absolutely. even though yes. those small internal events mm. could could have uh, an improvement yeah. uh, instead of being sort of the same old same old mm. uh, we have some cake and coffee mm. yes everybody's yeah, happy absolutely. so so i think now the it's important to understand that we are uh, attending a lot of events ourselves without even realizing that we are attending events. Mm. And I think the pandemic with all the virtual events made it very clear because our calendar was always full. So yeah. it was like, oh, we have so many events to attend exactly. to. Yeah. So uh, great. So you have started the work with Event Portfolio and that that's great that uh, you're, you're pioneering in, in that aspect as well. Um, how about, uh, Monica, some uh, other work that you, you would like to emphasize regarding the business cooperation that you have with Haga Helia that um, w- you said that the, the, uh, the premises can be rent mm-hmm. out for, for yeah. event hosting and yeah. there's a lot of projects and cooperation you do That's with true. the industry. Would you like to touch upon uh, a few uh, yeah. key examples yeah and, exactly uh, as i as success I said, stories mentioned already in the beginning that this is, has been kind of the our strategy from the very beginning that we work together with companies and we want to um, ensure that our students get this real life experience with all the challenges involved sometimes um, they can be really really um, messy you know Life is sometimes messy. So if you have a very controlled process and a learning assignment, like 
a fictive one, you can you can design and you can create the timetable. But then when you're working with real life productions, you have surprises, you have changing situations, you have uh, people falling sick, you have, um, you know, all kinds of obstacles that you need to learn to work around. Uh, so, um, but what we offer for businesses is a concept called events by Haga Helia. Mm -hmm. So this is our event services concept. Uh -huh. So it includes renting our premises in our campuses in Porvo, Haga and Pasila. We also, um, uh, of course, offer uh, training for event professionals uh, on demand, mm -hmm. commercial, commercial trainings. And um, what uh, I mostly work with is these commissioned projects mm -hmm. by, uh, by companies. So we need always a set of uh, organizations or companies who would be interested in working with our students, who would mm -hmm. like to give one of their events in the hands of the students and mm. see what they come up right. with, with cre creative, creative concept, ideas, yeah, exactly. marketing plan, but also the implementation and the staffing and all the, all the parts. So this is, um, this is something that we really uh, value, you know, the work with the, with the companies and we are always hunting for these, uh, mm. these kind of corporations. So how got uh, dash helia dot fi is the website for people to find more information, right? Yes, yes, Had exactly. <laughs> Good uh, to point out. Uh, yeah, just uh, check out haga dash helia dot fi and find out more. I have a question or a comment from uh, Dr. Rice. Hosting successful events has done wonders for countries who are seeking to rebrand themselves. Scotland has done this well and developed a reputation for successful event management, especially with sporting culture and music events. And uh, here it's hidden, but I can read you the rest. So this has definitely change the perception of Scotland in the eyes of the world and that's Gareth absolutely right and and spot on that's very true and Scotland has done great work and I think um, uh, Scotland and and uh, Australia New Zealand um, have done excellently and the leading thought leaders and gurus of event management is uh, Donald Gertz. Uh, you probably teach, uh, yes. I know that we use uh, his books in, in our libraries and in our teaching. And then there's William O'Toole from Australia. And then there is a Greek actual professor from the University of Leeds, Dr. Uh, professor uh, Ziakas. They are the three leading experts who, who talk about event portfolios. And uh, UK, Scotland, and uh, the uh, Australia, New Zealand, these are the regions and, and countries countries that they are pioneering in, in event portfolios and really using events to uh, rebrand themselves and to create that positive image. And that's very close to my heart. I've done my, my master thesis, Monica, in Sibelius Academy in destination branding and the role of spotlight events in, yeah. in those. Um, let me ask you in this case, in terms of um, Hagahelia, what are some spotlight flagship events that Hagahelia is organizing that uh, they're helping Hagahelia's uh, image? Since now uh, Gareth uh, raised up the, the branding or the rebranding mm. efforts. Do you have any? Yeah, we have this annual recurring or... annual events. We work closely, for example, with the Expo Center in Helsinki. I was happy to see Rauna here. She mm -hmm. just completed uh, an international congress. Uh, she was doing her internship for a Belgian and German uh, professional congress organizers and learned, learned about that field. So uh, we have these um, selected partners that we are cooperating with. They can be tied to various uh, specific congresses uh, or trade fairs. For example, now upcoming in fall, we have the Habitare Interior Design Fair with special exhibitions called uh, Signals. And um, also the we have some cooperation there with kind of recycled clothes and fashion show type of uh, uh, content. Um, so, and, and we work together with the Olympic Committee on a regular basis. 
um, Suomenlinna is one of our partners. And then we, of course, have our own own partners as well, like our own internal um, productions that we, we produce. But when it comes to destination branding and how events can support, I fully agree with the discussion you had earlier um, that I think events their true power lies in that you can change the attractiveness of a destination with kind of light methods you don't need to make big investments in facilities or or anything else but you can actually with a solid event strategy uh, and a sustainable event strategy you can really kind of um, strengthen the brand of of destinations and uh, i think this will be the future also for maybe not so known destinations but this is this is crucial and uh, this is also something that we have now included in the new curriculum so we we will focus more also on supporting destinations with the help of events mm. but of course we can talk on and on about urban degeneration and and the impact on cities and uh, um, we have a lot of questions here and uh, one is successful uh, so before that an event performance measuring from Germany there's an example check that uh, uh, link that our LinkedIn user has shared with us uh, mice-advice.e slash event performance check that uh, out I'll, I'll check it out as well later on and uh, then regarding the exclusivity so inclusivity so successful events are inclusive how can event managers ensure that their events are as inclusive as possible how do local communities benefit is there a legacy monica your take mm, yeah this is a big question mm. um uh and um, these are something that we discuss within the framework of uh, event sustainability so you know the role of local community how do we interact with them how do we use local producers how do we use and engage local artists how do we use the public space so these are really big and interesting topics and um, uh, the legacy discussion is of course very valid uh, but i'm not really sure if we have time to go yeah. deeper into that one but um um, Gareth, maybe you could be my next guest. And good you, idea. <laughs> good idea. You, you are, you are the expert. So maybe, maybe we can uh, create and and host uh, um, a podcast. What do you say? Uh, comment from Rauna. Uh, yes, thank you, Monica, for um, getting me connected. Uh, and I, I understood that finally the internship. Uh, was thanks to you. And I think this is important, the role of teachers, Monica. We know it very well that uh, our role is to... Uh, teachers are very giving people. I'm, I'm a qualified teacher in Finland, a member of the Teachers Union. And I do believe that teachers, we are so giving we want to share our knowledge to share our contacts to make our students succeed so we write those recommendation letters of course to those students who who are worth it right and and we believe in them truly um but we're trying to help everybody succeed and what would be monica uh your final words uh as in what are the um, the the future of education, the future of uh, event uh, professionals? What they should if if they forget everything else they heard today, mm. what would be the main points that you want to instill in their memory from everybody checking out there and listening? What to remember to mm. always do? Yeah. What advice would you give? Maybe if you are listening in with the purpose of maybe applying to event management studies or if you are currently studying event management um, I would say that this industry enables you to really somehow follow your dreams because it opens up various possibilities for you. You can you can work as Rauna now with the International Congress, or you can work with festivals, with artistic content, or you can be focusing on sports events. Mm -hmm. So finding that inner drive mm -hmm. and your motives, and also during the studies, try different formats, 
somebody loves virtual events. They are very techni- technically like Tech advanced savvy, and, yeah. uh, and interested in technology. So uh, they will find their path probably mm-hmm. that way. So my advice would be just to uh, figure out what you're interested in. And um, then I would say that the event management studies will support your kind of career wishes and and uh, helps you get to the position that you want to. Mm. Great. And what do you think, Monica, about the continuous learning of, of event professionals? Is this um, important to, uh, to to learn you, to constantly um, yeah. expanding their horizons? Uh, I think in every profession, you need to keep yourself updated. And we in Finland, we have embraced this understanding of, of lifelong learning and we do go to further trainings and um, we educate ourselves um, the event industry has also faced some big challenges and and um, developments so obviously keeping yourself updated in digital marketing in virtual and hybrid event technologies and tools for engaging the audience you know the the area and the field is evolving so fast mm-hmm. so i would say without without proper training and continuous training mm-hmm. you might have a hard time you know keeping up mm-hmm. and um, if i'm allowed i could maybe point out if we have uh, event managers listening we have an event going on which is called hybrid ninja which is a specific project for educating event professionals so so if you're if you feel that you didn't really So it's you a hybrid ninja. Hybrid yeah. ninja, yeah. It's it's a good uh, uh, kind of brand of that mm-hmm. training uh, program that we are All launching right. now in in from start in August so who or could, September. So who, who can participate? Uh, any anybody who is interested in um, in improving their skills in the event management field. It can be current students or event professionals or or even academics. Okay, great. I'll, I'll check it out. Check it out as well at hagahelia.fi uh, and even Ninja and a lot of contact. There's a great website. Uh, so check it out. There's lots of information. And um, Monica, before in the middle of the show, I didn't want to interrupt you at that point, uh, but you mentioned about no show. Yes. And probably uh, you've heard the podcast uh, of last week with Risto Oksanen. Yes. We spoke about the future of event sponsorship. And now we're talking about the future of event management education and educating event professionals. So Risto left you a question. Yes, Do you remember did. his question? Yes. How to reduce no show. Yes. <laughs> so it's the it's really a thousand dollar question and it's really a curse of the event industry at the moment um, and has been for a while. So if I would have a perfect solution, you know, I would be a rich uh-huh. <laughs> lady probably. But but uh, if we break it down, first yes. of all, you were talking before about the no-show of students coming on campus. Mm-hmm. So let's start with that. Mm. How do you um, entice the students to come back on campus after yes. being two yeah. years at home exactly. or maybe, uh, you know, giving up and going back to their home country already because they can't mm. stand this way mm-hmm. of, of yeah. living and, and studying. Yeah, so I think everybody normal. has the right to vote with their feet. So if you don't provide a good content and a reason for actually joining uh, a real life event, is it then in educational setting or at the office or at an event? So there must be a reason for you to join. So what event managers maybe really... and others who are kind of um, collecting people to to gatherings uh, would need to f- really think about like what is the added value of, of joining on site mm. so do we have a specific reason for that and um, when it comes then to no shows at events um, what you can do is to have a good pre-communication of course really making sure that you attract the right audience that you are very specific about who is it targeted mm. for and what is the content and what what value do you get out of it and what mm. is the benefit of joining right. and then of course a smooth registration process with reminders and everything but then and this is where Luty comes in <laughs> yes. and then prior to the event you would need to 
you know, be very closely in contact with your event attendees, reminding them of it's okay to, you know, cancel. Mm. Please let us know if you can't make it. Did your plans change? So two or three even reminders before the event. And you could also be open about it. Like the reason is, you know, our, our catering. Mm, like exactly. we don't want to have uh, waste food waste. Food. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and most people they understand it, and most people are also willing to reduce the food waste. So if we just you know in a kind way ask them to reply and to confirm, uh, that's good. What that's one thing we can do, and then I think unfortunately we can never you know remove the no shows entirely. Mm. But what we can do, and I've seen it. Last week, actually, myself in one of the events that I attended is that um, the event organizers prepared small lunch boxes and everybody could take home with them the sandwiches that were uh, offered, you know, just a couple of hours earlier. Mm -hmm. So instead of throwing it in the bin, you just kind of, you know, here, Mm -hmm. take home, you can grab a a late lunch, uh, you know, enjoy our small snacks Mm -hmm. later on. And I think... I mean, this is allowed, like, uh, right. you know, we have a strict legislation yeah. Yeah. with hygiene and stuff. But um, but this is a solution that, mm. that I would recommend every event manager to to include in there. Great. And uh, here, Monica, we're going towards the end of today's podcast. And uh, my next guest, you just answered to, to Risto's uh, question from the previous podcast. But my next guest is... Uh, Yvonne uh, Blomstedt from the uh, Huone Events Hotel, also a Hagahelia alumna. Exactly. Uh, who is doing bri- bri- brilliantly, uh, a great entrepreneur. So um, Yvonne will be talking about the future of business meeting venues and the future and work in general. So what question do you have for Yvonne? Excellent topic, Evan. I will definitely listen to you next mm-hmm. week. And um, when it comes to venue trends, um, we also talk about um, XR enhanced contents. So what? how do you see, Evan, uh, how can you use uh, the emerging XR technologies in your venue? Mm-hmm. You know, do you bring in hologram speakers? Do you have uh, mixed reality where you, with, with your phone, can watch different content? So how do you see this development and uh, how how are you preparing for this? Mm. That would be my question. Great. Uh, Evon, you heard Monica. So that's the question you will be answering at some point to um, in our show next week, Wednesday at 12. Uh, uh, let me just uh, go through the comments. A very active day in uh, in comments. And thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Rice is leaving for a meeting. I hope we have a great, you had a great, uh, you have a great meeting. Uh, and thank you for an interesting podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have a great day as well kisses and uh, then we have um, Elena writing the problem with no shows are also that it is a big cost for the organization who is having the event of course this is different if customer buys tickets to the events to the event great uh, yes yeah, so this is where we wrap up uh, the show so I would like to thank Monica Birgle, Senior Lecturer in Event Management at Haga Hele University of Applied Sciences, one of the most known, well-known universities of applied sciences in Finland with, with um, uh, how many students, Monica? 10,000. 10,000. 10,000 students in five different campuses and 600 uh, teachers and administrative staff taking good care of those thousands and thousands of students from all over the world. I had a pleasure to work with Haga Helia for many, many years. So uh, thank you, Monica, for your insights here in thank the podcast. You. I'm always happy to talk about the event studies and it's an exciting field of study. Mm. So we are really hoping to have good students starting with us in August. Exactly. Uh, the application is, is uh, as finished? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we have uh, selected or, or we are in the process of selecting right. the students. And uh, there's a new round of application for the English taught program starting in January 2023. Right. Okay. So if you're still, you know, watching and exactly. figuring out, so the application period for that intake is in August. Okay. So check out 
in uh, and study in English event uh, management at Halkahelia start in January. So the application period is is still open uh, and that or or is going it's to go- be open. Yes, in, exactly. So so uh, keep your eye on that on Halkahelia.fi. And uh, thank you, Bastian. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Before you go, Monica, have some presents. So uh, help yourself, please. Here is oh. the Luti Event Success Community uh, Mug. For all of you out there, uh, check out Luti and Event Success Community. If you are into events, organizing uh, or studying, go check uh, Event Success Community and join the community on Facebook and on LinkedIn as well. Monica, here I give you a little booklet about the experience value score. You know about that as well, but you can read it on your way back to Porvo. Thank you. And uh, here next to you, there I have the Luti hoodie. Okay. Um, can can I can we see it? How it looks in front of you? Yes, that's right. It's a very fluffy and warm hoodie. Maybe you can have it in in autumn. It looks. Perfect. It's really <laughs> soft and nice. It's really soft, yes. Yeah. Uh, what I have a little challenge for the hoodie, Monica. Okay. Uh, I must say it's not your size, perhaps. It's a little bit bigger. But Let's anyway, uh, I would like you to wear this hoodie in the next event you're organizing or attending. Okay. You don't have to wear it for the whole day, but you can wear it for a few minutes and uh, take a picture, you know, with your mobile. So take a picture of yourself and then send it back to me and tell me what event you're attending. Is it your student's event? Do you organize it uh, yourself? Are you an attendee? So tell us a little bit about the, um, and put, put your picture in the event success okay. community. I might be wearing it a short time during our graduation ceremony okay. on the 17th of June. 17th of <laughs> June, lots of Hagahelians will be graduating. Uh, so Monica will make her appearance. So we're curious to see uh, on that celebratory occasion. That was the end for today's Event Success Insights podcast. Uh, I'm Chris Skodra, and I had the pleasure to have my former colleague Monica Birkley with me talking about the future of education uh, in event management. So I will see you next week. Uh, on Wednesdays at 12 o'clock. Uh, so, yes, stay tuned and bye from us. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for.